everybody and welcome! It's Vasco here from the Angular University and in this lesson we are going to learn about the router link directive. Learn a couple of different ways to use it, there's more than one, and we're going to see how it can actually be applied to different elements on the page, not only links. It's coming right up. To start, let's configure a few more routes in our application. By the way, our application is a small e-learning system where we will have a list of courses, we click on it, we can see the lessons, so it's a small e-learning platform. In this section of the router, we are just simply going to focus on the routing, but in an upcoming section, we are going to build the whole application, including the backend, we are going to use Firebase. So let's get started, let's first configure a couple of extra routes. We are going to configure besides the home route, we are going to configure the courses route, we are going to show the courses component, and the lessons route, where we are going to show the all lessons component. Let's give this configuration a quick try. So if we type in the URL home, we get displayed the home component. Now let's try it with courses. This is the courses component containing just a list of courses. And this is the lessons route, where we have a list of all the lessons available. This confirms that the routing configuration is working. Now what we want to do is to create a top menu, where we can click in one entry and navigate directly to that section. So let's do that using the router link directive. Let's start by applying router link to an anchor tag. So we can apply it by simply passing the path to which we want to navigate the angular2 router path that is. So the directive will cancel the navigation that is associated to a normal anchor HTML element and it will instead trigger the router. Let's configure another menu entry like this and let's show another way of using router link. You can also pass it in an expression, you are not forced to pass it a string, so if you pass it an expression you should pass it an array containing the different paths to which you want to navigate. In this case, we want to navigate to the lessons path. The router link directive is not only meant for anchor elements, you can apply it actually to any element on the page. So let's apply it to the home icon. What happens here is that the click on the element will be detected and in response to the click, the route will be triggered. If you enjoyed this tutorial, you can always subscribe to my channel for more upcoming Angular 2 tutorials. Also, have a look at the website of the Angular University to see what type of Angular 2 tutorials you find there that you might like. Notice here that in this component we have included in its directives array the router directives. Without this, router link will not work. Also, any other routing directive would not work without this. So this is already a good start, you have an application, you have a couple of routes configured, you have a menu. What you want to do from the beginning in an application is to configure a fallback route and also a default home route. We are going to see how to do this in the upcoming lesson.